Yo, what's up everyone? It's Will Fox back at it again with another breakdown video. This time we're going to be covering Overwhelmed Despair, Hilda's theme from Undernight and Birth. As always, um, I have extra files in um, the description in my Patreon. So thank you guys for the suggestion to do this one. And um, this video is just to show you guys how I go about breaking down a song and I take it piece by piece. And what do I think about um, when I'm playing and what helps me learn a lot faster. So this song is very interesting. Um, I'm sure you've heard it before, um, but it's basically the same theme over and over, but just in different keys. So you also have like, and so on. So the cool thing that's kind of a double double edged sword. So the old me would have just learned how to play the song from start to finish and just copied all the notes from Synthesia. But the new and improved me would has uh learned how to learn about the key itself that we're in. So uh C minor. And then I would also study um E flat minor. And then same thing with F sharp. And I would just transpose the song, the same song into those different keys. As a kid, I was really bad at doing that since I uh, used Sandesi as a crutch. Um, and it was really holding me back. But it's still a good way to get started in learning. So don't get me wrong. Like, definitely, like, um, at least get started. Uh, I, I think it's better to do something than, like, to just over plan and never do anything. So that's fine. Uh, it's just that learning this song for me was a lot easier when I just broke it down into like, okay, I know how to play in this key. I know how to play in that key. I know how to play in that key. So let me just try to get it all together. So that's a better um, approach in my opinion. Um, so before I get started, I do want to say a few notes about this video in particular. So uh, the software that you see on screen, It's called Cordy, and it shows all of my inputs, and it shows um, the chord names and whatnot. Um, this song is, since it moves around in so many different keys, there's going to be some inconsistencies with what you see on screen and and how I perceive things. So keep that with a grain of salt. Um, and the reason for that is is you care about where a, a song, the key of a song, and this. This way, you know, um, the software would know how to um, best uh, describe the chord that I'm on. So sometimes you're going to see weird things, but I'm going to make do my uh, best to um, clarify how I see it. So uh, I hope that isn't too confusing. Okay, so one other thing I would like to say. Um, so whenever I talk about the chord progressions with this song, since this song is a song that uh, that changes key so frequently, I'll talk about the chords itself. Like uh, I'll say like C major and D, or excuse me, C minor, D major, and and whatnot. I'll say all that, but I'm also going to say what the chord values are, so that when we transpose, since those chord values are exactly the same, it's just a matter of understanding that key. So. Um, Without further ado, this is the chord progression of the main uh, melody. The main melody is just one thing, just over and over, but um, I like to break that into two parts. So the first half, the chord progression is like C, C minor, one, uh, D major, two, which uh, is usually like a diminished in a minor key but it's going to be major so it's like kind of strange and uh, we're going to be playing G major which is your 5 and then we're going to be going back to uh, your 1 and then we're going to be lifting into like turning this 1 into like a major and what I like to do is instead of just bringing this down to make it major I like to like bring it with me like that so we still did the movement so um just um just look out for that basically so that's the first half and the melody is and 
And the cool thing about the melody is that the melody really highlights um, the changes and, and the quality of the chord that we're doing. So I could literally just play like the bass and the, the melody is still going to like really um, force things to be um, to be the chord quality that we're looking for. So like... So we're still seeing like a C minor. And then we're still seeing like a D major. And then we're still seeing like a G major. So that's really cool. And that's all over the place with this song. So it's really cool. So a lot of times with the accompaniment, you don't have to like... You don't have to even do that. Like, so you'll you'll see me do various like things, and it, it doesn't really matter. It's like whatever you want to do with your left hand, feel free to do. At least if you hold, like, if you maintain the the root of the chord, even sometimes the five. It's gonna sound good, so that's cool. Okay, so I played the second half. So let me um explain the second half the second half is a little bit um more straightforward that's a lot of movement if you're familiar with the circle of fits that's all we're going to be doing we're just going to be starting at the four and then so just going from four to seven to three to six and then we're going to go to two but again when we go to two we're going to be playing major instead of diminished and then we're going to be going to five and then one so um let me go from like um so that's it so you just put that together um and the way that i would practice it if that's like a bit uh confusing is um just get a really good handle of what's in g uh excuse me what's in uh c minor and then whenever you see chords that shouldn't be there, then you'll be like, oh. I'll do this slow. So I always think of like um, like one, and then I know that we're wrapping around to six. So one, five, six. I don't think about every note in particular. I kind of like just zone out. But um, I know we're like approaching there. And all this is all these notes are diatonic, so I don't have to think too hard about it because I'm familiar. I'm familiar with C minor, so it's it's all good. And this part's annoying. So I'm really, personally, I'm really bad at uh, my sixes, like um, like playing um, like a, a minor six. And even when it comes to hearing, I, I'm not the best at distinguishing a minor six and a major six. It's something I'm working on. And um, this is the only part of the melody or the this section of the melody. I should have said I broke this into three parts. Excuse me about that. But this is the only part of that melody where we use something that isn't diatonic. So, oops. We use this B natural instead of B minor. And then the second half, you're coming from three. And you're going to be using um, the tritone. And you're going to be cleaning up the same way where you do like this uh, this jump to this like uh, you're going to be going up a uh, minor six okay so with that being said um i would really really i can't stress this uh, enough like the way that i learned the song is that i just really learned i really learned how to play it in that key and then now going forward we're just going to be playing the exact same thing in different keys and every time we move, we're going to be going up a minor third. So we start out in we start in C minor, and now we're going to be going to E flat. So remember, major on the two, and then five, and then one, and then uh, two, 
Oops. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. You do major. And then you want four. And then three. Six. And then major on the on the two. And then um, five. And also, um, one thing that I, I forgot to mention is that the way that I remember that part of the, the melody, um, this is just a diminished, it's just a full diminished chord um, starting from your um, your six, I believe. Your major six, okay. Anyways, uh, I just remember like, you just do it and then you just arrive to the five. So it's like, it's just another path to get to this five. So that's all I'm thinking about when I'm there, like when I'm on this T chord. Okay, so just get comfortable doing that. We don't stay in E flat. Um, we don't stay in E flat minor for too long. It, it just passes there. Maybe that one time in the song. I'm not even <laughs> sure right now in this exact moment, but um, as long as you're like comfortable with it. And I guess, we really use um, C more so than uh, B. Anyways, hopefully you learned how to play it in C minor by now, and then playing an E minor, E flat minor, uh, makes it, it makes it so you can hit the ground running. Now, where a lot of the song actually resides, and where the bridge actually goes to too, is in F sharp um, minor. So. The exact same thing. Uh, five. And then remember the diminish. Oops, sorry. And then you play the uh, second half. High tone six so just practice that there too and oh we okay we actually do go back to uh e minor uh in the next part e flat minor but anyways practice that and um then you can get to this part of the section okay so here's some new material now um the bridge so this part starts off in E flat minor. Okay, so let me break that part down. Um, let me start with the chords. So we're using E minor. Let me just do it with this hand. E minor. And then we're using the like this um, D flat major. So um, even though it feels like we're going up to F, instead of playing F diminished, we're gonna be putting that there, which actually makes this a D flat minor. I hope the software is saying that. But everything else, well, actually, that's not true. So after this, then we go to like this G, and then we do like the same movement where we make the, this E uh, this E flat major and then uh, I believe uh, A flat major and then like this F and then we're using this E flat to B flat so you can traverse to different chords um, by just shifting um, one other note or me or even two other notes instead of like um so i can traverse to like this a flat like this it's like a really cool uh, shortcut you can do like this so as long as these two are here it forces us to a flat and your ear picks up on that too so um instead of going like that which is like kind of uh, annoying to do <laughs> depending on the type of song but it's not necessary for this song so I do more work it's just it's just it's just very important to make the distinction in your head that 
you are changing your chord and to know what chord you're changing it to is very important. So again, as a kid, I kind of just like zoned out and I just like did stuff and I didn't really notice that. It's a very subtle thing that happens. So this section does this a lot. There's different ways to do it. So that's cool. So you can um, break that piece by piece and really understand. Um, one trick to quickly uh, see it on your own is that um, whatever is like a, if if you're familiar with like a perfect fourths or any like uh, intervals like that, if something, so it would I would immediately not think that this is like um, deriving from E flat because I know that this is a fourth away, and if it's not a third or smaller, it cannot start from here, even though it is just a different on, uh, what's the word, voicing, the other word, inversion. So it's just a different inversion of the chord. So this is second inversion. So uh, specific in the song would do this, huh? So, oh, that's actually really tricky. So you can move everything and, and open up. So this actually moves to your seven, even though you're, you're going to one and you're moving up, but you're going to seven because seven is seven uh seven two and four so you're moving to two but since you're dropping this down it actually makes it a seven since this is a fourth away a perfect fourth away so that's how i just quickly see it like this is a minor third away or it's a third even if it was like um like that ugh, that's not meant at you that's not a good example <laughs> but anyways i i immediately when i look at this like i'm just like i'm not the i'm not even the best at seeing this but right now i can tell that it's not this chord it's this chord so this is something a little like i just want to be very clear about um when i'm doing a lot of other stuff so just be careful with that okay now let me talk about the melody with it <laughs> i was quite a bit but um um i know that we start on the three both times that we do it so this melody is played twice um the second time it's an f sharp uh, minor but we'll get there when we get there um so i i just remember we start at three <laughs> so your melody does touch some notes that are not in uh, in in this key, so we have like this this note, which uh, is like a flat too. But I'm not gonna go too deep into all that theory stuff. Just um, the chords will guide you with your melody. That's why it's important to learn that to learn that first. Okay, next section. Ooh, E. Ooh, I need to take this one. Uh, I need to break this one down for myself. So, um, we transpose again up a minor third, and the same progression. So, um, um, you're uh, one, and then you're seven, but like this. And then your three, and then this is um, oops, this is um, oh, I see. Now it goes to your um, um, your one, but major. <laughs> oops, and then your four, which is minor, and then I believe it goes to um. Ooh, I'm actually kind of confused myself right now. Oh, I see. It goes to two, the major. I see. And then um, you go to one, and then the five, which is cool. So um, oops.
times. And then you learn the song. <laughs> okay, so even that part threw me off at the moment. And I was actually taking my own advice. I was like, oh, yeah, you got to remember uh, the chord values. So the melody is a bit different on uh, this section. I'll play it one more time. Oops. Oops, okay. <laughs> And then just that section again. I just personally chose to, to represent it with like the left hand. I guess you could do it all together too. You, I'm just providing you the building blocks and it is just my interpretation of, um, of the music. So I hope that helped you understand what I think about with the song. And this, uh, just one last time, this song is very dense with like... Um, with um understanding what you're doing in that key it's just moving it to another key so if you're comfortable with that and you're comfortable with like playing like that's the weird thing so this is not a beginner song in my opinion because um it plays in a key but it kind of leaves that key anyways even when we're in that key so like we already left like we're playing a d major when we're at when we're in c minor so it's like we're already gone so it might not be the best one for learning. It might just teach you a lot of stuff and it might go over your head. But if you're familiar with piano, if you're good with theory, I recommend this for someone that um, is interested in just um, learning just just to exercise their theory and to learn how to like shift their thoughts into other aspects of theory. So, okay. I hope this one made sense. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask me uh, in the comment section of the video. I look at all my comments. Ask me on Discord. Ask me on Patreon. Like, feel free to send me a message, um, and feel free to support there too. Uh, it does help me create more stuff. And um, people have mentioned that they wanted more of these types of videos, so I'm um, allocating more time to that to keep everyone satisfied. So, without any more um, delay. Thank you, and I hope you learned how to play this song. Let me learn if you learned how to play this song. But have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>